All right, y'all, it's a brisk, breezy day here in South Louisiana. I'm Jared Cerny, you're watching Outside the Levees, and this fella here is Mr. Marshman Masson. What's up, Jared? He has a YouTube channel, and if you really, really, really want to learn and become a better fisherman and learn technique and uh, what to look for, ties, that kind of thing, go sign up for his channel right now. I'm a meat fisherman. Y'all watch me, I catch meat, I show you little things I look for, but you can learn a lot about fishing from Todd. So go check him out right now. You can pause this video, come back to it. Marshman Masson is the name of the channel. Go check him out. I got him out here slumming. He's normally in his boat. But we catch him. <laughs> He's normally in his nice boat, catching nice fish. I got him out here slumming on the bank, catching catfish, but we're having a great time. So I'm just gonna jump right into the action. Thank y'all for being here, let's get to it. Jared's got a fish. There we go. I need a GoPro. I don't have no, You got something? Yeah, there we go. I don't Redfish? I don't know. No. Catfish. Yeah. All right, here we go. All right. Looks like lunch. That was a weird bite. I bet that's what hit me. It was a cat. Yeah. That's all right. No, I'll take that. Can you keep it? Yeah, oh yeah, keep it. Right. Yeah, definitely. Good little eating size. Yeah. All right. Is a one ounce pyramid on a drop shot with a circle hook and shrimp. And then I've got a bunch of these minnows. I'm gonna put some of these minnows on that hook too. That way, if my shrimp does come off down there, I got minnows to something to try and get these fish to bite. One minnow, two minnow. There we go. Now we got a plethora of bait. Oh, Marshman hooked up, boy! Oh, look at <laughs> Oh my goodness. That dude is hooked up. Look at him. Nice. Rough conditions. It is windy. Not ideal. Oh, he's on there, all right. Catfish on the bank, boy. <laughs> this is fun. Catfish on the bank, making it happen. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. How many are you keeping? Uh, if you tell me as many as I can keep, I don't care. I just need. I, I, I would mind keeping like about ten, I guess. Okay, that's all I need to know. But you know, whatever. That's all I need to know, my boy. I'm gonna go get whatever we need over here. Come on. I know, I know. And those I caught on minnows. That one I caught on, yeah, that was, well, it had a piece of shrimp too, but the good thing is, you know, if they bite that, then we we got plenty bait. If they only want shrimp, then, well, we'll see. All right, y'all, we're catching quite a few here. Uh, I think what's got this bite going, it is definitely cold. I think Todd said we believe the water is in the 40s, which is a very cold water temperature for us, even if it's the high 40s like 49 and 54 are very big differences when it comes to water temperature so we got these catfish fairly active they're not like you know just kind of hanging on the hook quite a few of them have really kind of nailed that hook like that super fun can't get any better than just hanging out sanding in the marsh catching uh once again i always appreciate y'all being a part of this let's see if we can get some more all right y'all so here's what was working for us i found this drain uh, we believe it's at least five foot deep there, whereas your surrounding ponds are probably three foot or less. So it's, you know, it's a channel come between two ponds and your fish are staged up down there in the middle. Like I said, we think it's at least five foot deep. 
not super deep like 10 or 13 foot but definitely deeper than a lot of the stuff in this area and as that tide's falling out they're biting right about there so we're gonna keep on catching them dude was that on the minnows i did have a piece of shrimp oh yeah shrimp. Sure. all right oh that's a nice one i had three minnows and a piece of shrimp so we still don't know if the minnows alone is enough. right <laughs> We know they like the shrimp. We know they like the shrimp. That's probably the last one we'll keep. Okay. That's enough. All right, y'all. Well, that bite has pretty much died. Uh, we had a good tide when we got here. And Todd, you know, and I just started catching them right out the gate. And uh, I think we got, what, about 10 or so? Yeah, about 10. About 10 or so. And it's died. So we're going to go ahead and have a little something to eat. I've been doing this a lot lately, trying to cook out here using my little camp stove. And we're gonna do it again uh, in order to do it today. I've been keeping it simple on my camp cooking recipes. So we're gonna use the Blue Runner Etouffee Base. I've used this a few times before to make a quick shrimp and grits, just add, you know, doctoring it up. And I knew it would be good out here. So I don't know if I'm gonna call this a catfish stew or what we're gonna call it, but we're using this Etouffee Base. We're gonna add a few of our own things. So let's just get right into it. I, of course, like to add a little something of my own. Um, see like how hot it got it though? Yeah, like it got it hot pretty quick. It was definitely for like a big group of yeah, people. A quick way to have something yep. ready, you know? Everybody likes. Everybody liked it. So I'm just trying to get the process rolling here. And then we got a secret ingredient that I brought. Ooh, can't wait to see that. I don't know. Yeah, it's already turning white. Yeah, see if I had, it's a little, a little waterier than I want it to be. If I had like that, a can of that cream of mushroom or cream of uh, celery. Out. Yeah, I would probably put some in. But, you know, you live and learn. Like, what my ideal, I want to get to where that box is full has a little bit of everything stuff. I need, yeah. you know? It's like your pantry. Yes. All right, y'all, here's my little camp cooking box I wanted to show y'all. I've got a fillet knife because most of the time when we're doing this, it's fish. Um, I do keep these little tongs in there. I got a can opener today, but if I keep it in there for too long, my wife's going to yell at me. So I need to get me a can opener for it. Um, this is some spare butane if I need it, olive oil, salt, pepper, seasoning salt, got me some plates, some trash that needs to go in another bucket. But basically I want to have something simple that I can use every time I come out on the boat in a small enough box. So I went with a small box rather than something big. I could even fit my little cast iron in here. So that's what I went with and I keep all this ready to go so we can cook out here on the go. Utensils. Probably put all of that in there. Might as well, right? What's Taking it gonna it hurt? All right, so that's the whole can. We're just gonna let it cook. Keep an eye on that rod. Salt, pepper. This stuff is actually not bad. Seasoning salt. I'm gonna add some seasoning salt. Try to give that fish a little something to hang on to. Why not, huh? You got it, why not? Little Italian herbs. You know, all those Italian people we had in New Orleans, they had to learn how to do Cajun cooking, so I'm sure they blended their stuff with our stuff. And you know, Creole's a mix. Creole's a mix, baby. Mix of everything. All right, y'all, and the secret ingredient for today is some fresh Louisiana oysters. My buddy Ricky Fayard gave me these. Shout out to Ricky, appreciate it, my brother. And that's gonna go in there and make it something else. We got the catfish and the oyster, y'all. All right, get all that. Get all them oysters in there. A little bit of oyster juice, too. Oyster juice is so good. All right, look at this. Oh, that's gonna be so good. All right, y'all, and uh, normally on a dish like this, I'd put the rice and then put the, the, the etouffee stew, whatever it is, over it. But since we only have plates and not bowls, which I would normally serve this, serve this in a bowl, I'm gonna drop the rice right in and let it soak up some of that liquid so that we can just pour it out onto a plate. I mean, if it's all going on the same bowl and plate, it doesn't really matter in the end, so long as it doesn't soak up all the liquid, which I know it wouldn't, so let's get a good bit in there. There ain't, no, there ain't no good way to bring leftovers home from the marsh. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use it all and we're gonna eat till our bellies are full. All right, y'all, here we are. 
just about ready. Got my buddy Marshman, my son. Yes. Please go check him out. Can't wait we'll to eat. Learn you something about inshore fishing because that man, he can do it now. He can do some inshore fishing. And I can do some eating. And uh, we actually got some tide moving again. I got me a rod out over there so we could catch a few before we leave. Because as we mentioned before, these fish, even catfish here in the marsh like tide. It's, you know, it's what I think signals to them, okay, it's feeding time. It's their dinner bell. So we're going to go ahead and eat. How it smells. But before I even take a bite, I'm going to give you your oysters back. Oh, he's breaking my heart, y'all. I know. No. He's breaking my heart, but I get it. Dude, there's a lot no, of people there's, don't like oysters. There's no seafood I don't like except oysters. That's okay. I just don't like them. You're man. okay with the flavor being in there? Oh, yeah, yeah, It's yeah, a yeah. texture. Yep, it's a texture. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Thing. Oh, no, I have to eat more oysters. Right. Oh, no, it's terrible. Right. And my wife <laughs> What will I ever do? Them. So I guess we... All right, y'all, so... I've talked about it on the show before, especially in the earlier days. You know, I have always done video. I didn't always do YouTube. I wasn't always the guy in the videos, but I've always done video and that's kind of what led me to YouTube. Um, and it's how I met Todd originally. So Todd was an outdoor writer. Did you start in magazines or was that in newspaper? So actually I was a junior at Loyola and picked up a copy of the Louisiana Sportsman at a local Schwegman's, believe it or not. That's, That's a, a grocery big, store. Big grocery store, anymore. right. Yeah. And fell in love with the magazine. Huh. I was a journalism student and so I wrote in, I actually wrote a story and sent it to him and the editor at the time, Ann Taylor, called me and, and loved it and and I got paid $150 for it, which back then was a lot of money. That's good money, right. yeah. And I got paid for my writing. It was the first time I got paid for my writing. Wow. And um, so then I graduated college, graduated from Loyola, and they had an opening and they hired me and spent 18 years there. And then- uh, What to, was your first story about? <clears throat> it's about the Borough Canal, which uh, is off of Highway 90 on the West Bank near the Jefferson Parish, St. Charles Parish line. Okay. It was um, it was a bass story actually. Huh. Uh, it was an area I fished a lot, caught a lot of sockeye there and bass. Really loved it. That's awesome. So yeah, we met when I started doing video in the same. You know, he I think he had left by the time I started working for Louisiana Sportsman, but we met through that and through some mutual folks we know. And uh, then he took over my buddy Bob. So the name outside the levees, I got that from Bob Marshall. Bob yeah, Marshall used to say that. that all the time outside the levees and I just loved it because it, it said so much by saying a little bit mm -hmm. like the levees are where you stay inside and safe and the you know when you get outside of them it's like that then then the adventure begins and of course it gets a little bit more dangerous though because he used to use it a lot for talking about hurricanes um, but he also said you know it was our playground so I just always that always stuck but Todd uh, took over when Bob left the Times Picayune and it was all like that stuff you were doing at that time was awesome. Oh, thank you, man. That's that means a lot. Actually, I wrote a, a couple of stories about you at that time, if I remember right. Yeah, we did a duck hunting story. Yep. But yeah, that was that was the most fun part of my career. I loved working there. Yeah. Um, and actually launched the Marshman Mass on Channel while I was at Times Picking In. Right. Um, which was in 2017. So it's man, seven years ago now. Hard to believe. Right. But um, I crazy. never thought I'd be doing this for a living. But I know, I know. <laughs> get to hang out on the marsh right here and <laughs> on a beautiful winter day. Right. Eating some great food. Man, I love it. So he was the first guy, I think, to step out and do it. I was too scared at the time. Like, I wouldn't have did that because I had one of the best hosts, you know, TV hosts and Greg Hackney. Right. What am I going to do if I, you know, like I would, I was, there's no way I would have done that. But so you were the first one, you know, in our area to step out and do it. And, uh, I really didn't know, like, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know. I st even when I started, it, I didn't know if it would be possible. I didn't know how you film yourself. I didn't know, you know, like, I just didn't know. But you having, you go ahead and do it first, kind of at least gave some of us the confidence of like, okay, somebody from our area did it and people are watching it. You know, I think we all, everyone knew the fishing was good enough to do it. Sure. Yeah. But like, could, could, you know, like just the way you figured out how to film yourself, I think gave a lot of us confidence. 
Well, I'm, you know, obviously it was a learning process. I made a lot of a million mistakes. Still make a lot of mistakes, but you know, couldn't do it without these. I mean, GoPro right. Sep- right. definitely a game changer, and they've up up their game so much. Them. You know, it's such a better product than it was even back when I started. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's you know, if you had told me 20 years ago I'd be making my living filming myself fishing, I would not. <laughs> I literally would not have believed it. I was. I mean, I'm an outdoor writer. That's that's what True. I was trained to do. Right, right. You made a big jump. That's what I do. And you know, for you, it was an easier transition because Correct. you came from kind of that background. I think the editing is the biggest hang-up for most sure. people. Sure, no doubt. And I spent so much time editing that, like, that part is the easiest part of doing this. The edit. Mm-hmm. I look forward to my edit days. It's kind of like an easy, easy day. day. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yep. yeah, it's it's been crazy. And I think I think we had to do that out of survival. I do. Because I don't think what I was doing, the TV thing, was was going to last, you know? Well, for me, it was 100% survival. I mean, yeah. print media is dead. It is. It's dead. And it's never coming back. But YouTube, you know, for me, has really re- replaced TV. I don't watch TV. I watch YouTube. Right. So, right. you know, it's not... You know, actually, I had somebody approach me wanting to do a TV show. And I'm like, to me, that's a step backwards. Like, no, I don't have any interest in doing that. I like what I do. And then they got the control, too, though. Sure. Right. You know, like, then you're kind of giving the reins back to them. That's, this is an entrepreneur's Correct. career. That's exactly right. You know? Yeah. I, and I call the shots. I work for myself. Right. I do have sponsors who I, you know, have to, uh, you know, promote their products and all that. But by and large, I work for myself. Set my own hours to decide what I want to do. And it's it's a great career. I love it. I I... I I definitely thought if you had asked me 30 years ago, would I be retired by this time? I'd say yes. That was my plan. But I have no interest in retiring. Why would you I want just, to stop doing it? I just love what yeah, I do. Right. Yeah. Right. And you'll see that when you go see his channel. He, I don't know, you one of those guys, like Hackney was like that. You're like that. Like you think like a fish. Well, thanks, man. You're able to like, that. I can't say put yourself in their shoes because they don't wear shoes. But it's like you, you, you. Like, look at the marsh, you look at the water, and you're like, okay, if I was a fish, where would I be? Or what would I be doing? And that really comes with time and passion. Yeah. Uh, which, yeah. I definitely have the passion. And, you know, I've been fishing here all my life, just like you. And that has waned not one iota. If anything, <laughs> it's intensified. I just, right. That's interesting. Uh, it's, it's what I think about when I put my head on the pillow at night, you know, yeah. just trying yeah. to figure these fish out. And I, I don't know what it is. Like, you think you'd lose the fire at some point, but I definitely haven't That's interesting. Yet. That's really interesting. All right, y'all. Well, like I said, nothing else uh, really to say at this point. We got full bellies. We caught fish. Y'all got to hear it from Marshman Masson. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there. Oh, wait. Oh, we got dessert. Oh, no way. Yeah, oh, the dessert. fudge. Yes. Yes. All right. So my buddy over there at Serenade's Marina gave us this peanut butter fudge. I said I wanted to try it. He said, take the whole bag. I said, all right, I ain't going to argue. <laughs> you insist. Because I knew we were having lunch out here. So this is peanut butter fudge. His buddy makes this it. This is crazy, man. He didn't make it himself, but this his buddy crazy. makes it. So we even got dessert out here in the marsh. And that's why you tune in to Outside the Levees. That's why you're going to tune in to Marshman Masson if you don't already. For the fudge. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Is that good? <laughs> yes. This is very good. I love peanut butter. Like, mm-hmm. well, now there's nothing left to say. Yeah. What a day. What a day. See y'all on the next one.